What's up guys, welcome back. I wanna take a look at this animation. Another very common animation that I see everywhere. This one is not the most complicated, but I think it's a classic, so it's worth taking a look. I'm gonna remake this using React and Frame Emotion. And as always, you can find the live demo and the source code in the description below. All right guys, so this is what I have to start. I have three phrases with three different images and I have some spacing at the top and some spacing at the bottom and also have a smooth scroll. And in the code, it looks something like this. I have my smooth scroll here initialized using the line scroll. And then I have my two spaces at the top and at the bottom taking 100 viewport height. And I have my three phrases with three different images. And then each phrase here, it's just some basic HTML and CSS. And we should have something like this. And now the first thing that I wanna do is for each phrase, I want to copy paste them once or twice. So I'm gonna have two or three instances of each phrase per line. And that way I can translate all of them on the X axis and it's gonna cover the full viewport and it's gonna be like a nice animation. And so to do that, I'm gonna create another component that I'm gonna reuse and I'm gonna call that the slider. And now that slider here, it's gonna return multiple instances of the same phrase. And so I could have phrase, 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 something like this. And it's gonna take a source as a prop and here I can return the source instead of hard coding it like this. And then I could have my slider instead of my three phrases, I'm gonna have a slider here and the source for the first one, I could choose like picture one. And if I save that, we should have something like this. And now what if I want my slider to be on the same line, right? I don't want it to be in the column like this. I would like to be in a row. And so all I have to do is do class name and put them in display flex basically. And now it's gonna be in a row, but since the lines are so long, way longer than the width of the viewport, it's getting crammed up like this. And so to mitigate that effect, all we have to do is add a white space, no wrap. That's kind of a little trick. If you want your phrases to overflow way beyond the viewport, way beyond the width of the viewport. And so we should have something like this. And now I have a little horizontal scroll here and I can show you it's just putting them one after the other like this. So that's basically what I wanna have, but I have now horizontal scroll that I wanna get rid of. And I can just go inside of the main and add here an overflow hidden and that way it's gone. Perfect, I don't have my horizontal scroll anymore. And then what I can do, I'm just gonna delete that. We don't need that anymore. And I'm just gonna copy paste my slider three times with a different picture. And now we should have something like this. And it looks a bit ugly because it's just all the same, the same phrases, the same position, the same images aligned here, which is not that nice. I would like to add some randomness inside all of that. And so to do that, what I could do, there would be multiple ways of doing this, but one way of doing it would be to add a left property to the props of the slider, something like this. And that left property, I'm gonna apply it as a style to the main container. And so I could have style here, the left value. And if I want the left value here to be applied, I need to put my div in position relative. And then I can go into each of my slider here and add some randomness. And so I could add a left for the first one of maybe minus 55%. And then I'm gonna copy paste that and maybe 15 for the second one and 40 for the last one, something like that. I'm gonna save that. And this looks much better. And also I see that it's each phrases are quite tight one after the other. I would like to add some margin. So all I'm gonna do is go inside of the phrases here and add some margin. So I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do some padding instead, not margin. So I'm gonna do padding on the X axis, something like five, and this looks a bit more natural. And now that we have that, all we have to do is find a way to track the progress of the scroll and translate each phrases to the left or to the right on scroll. So the first thing that I wanna do is put all of the sliders inside of a div, inside of a parent that I'm gonna track its progress inside of the viewport. And so when it enters the viewport, I'm gonna start tracking it and it's gonna return me a number between zero and one that I can use to translate all of the phrases. And when it leaves, that value here is gonna be one. That's kind of the concept here. And so for that, I'm gonna use the use scroll hook from Frame Emotion. And now that use scroll hook returns us this value called scroll wipe progress. So this is equal to the use scroll hook. And this scroll wipe progress here is the value between zero and one that I was talking about. And it needs to track a certain element inside of the viewport. And that's gonna be a container. I'm gonna call it like that. And I can create it here as a ref and I can give it to the main div that I've just created, which is the parent of all of the sliders. And so it's kind of gonna be a div 
that encapsulates all of this. And then I want to basically track when it enters the viewport. And so when it enters here, I want to start tracking. And when it ends here, I want to stop tracking. So that's going to be the offset values that I'm going to add to the use scroll hook here. And so the first value inside of the array of offset is the intersection of the container and the window when it enters the viewport. So at this point, I want to start tracking. So it's going to be the start of the container and the end of the window, right? That's going to be that first intersection. So start of the container, end of the window. And when do I want to stop tracking the progress of the scroll? It's going to be at that point here. So the end of the container and the top of the window, right? So it's going to be end of the container and start of the window. And that way, now my scroll Y progress is a value between zero and one, zero being here, and then it's going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up here, and that's going to be one, right? And now I can use that progress inside each slider to animate them. So what I'm going to do is create another value as a parameter for the slider. So I can have here a progress, and that progress is going to be the scroll Y progress that I've just created give it to all of the sliders. And now my slider has access to the progress here as a prop. And now the way that I can use it to create a translation on the X axis is by doing a const X here. And I'm going to do a use transform, which is coming from frame of motion. It's a hook from frame of motion. And that use transform is very similar to the math.map function. It's basically the same thing, but the frame of motion version one, it's a very useful mathematical equation that basically transforms a value into a new one. And so I'm going to transform my progress and that progress is a range of value between zero and one. And we want to transform those values. So when the value is zero, I want it to be maybe the X translation here, maybe minus 250. And then when the progress of the scroll is one, then maybe I want my X value here to be 250, right? Something like this. So now that progress is being transformed into new values that I'm putting inside of my X const here. And now I can use it as a style inside of my div here. And that's going to be translated, right? It's going to be a translate X value. And now since the X here, it's not a number, it's a motion value. So it's an object coming from frame of motion. And so the div is not going to understand what that X is if I just give it like that. And so to make it understand, I need to add the motion tag in front of the div. It's kind of some magic here. And frame of motion is going to take care of translating that X value into an actual number. And so I'm going to save it and see what we have. Now I have an error. I need to import the motion tag here from frame of motion like this. And I'm going to try this out. And here you can see if I scroll down, it's moving to the right. And then when I move up, it's moving to the left, right? And that's because I did minus 250 and 250 here as the translate X value. And that looks pretty good, but now the problem is they're all going on the same side. So I need to find a way to choose on which side they go so I can have the middle one go to the opposite side as the top and the bottom one. So what I'm going to create is another value here. I'm going to call it um, direction and it's going to be a string for now. And for example, the first one, I'm going to, I want it to go to the left and the last one, the same direction. And then the middle one, I want it to go to the right. And then I'm going to have my direction, same thing as a prop here. And I want now to transform that string into a number. And so I could have my const direction and I'm just going to transform that string into a value, either minus one or one. And, and that number is going to represent the direction, right? If I multiply by minus one, it's going to be a negative number. So it's going to go to the left. If I multiply by one, it's not going to do anything. So it's going to keep going to the right. And so here I can do if the direction is equal to left, then I want that value to be minus one else. I want that value to be one. And I can simply take that number, which is minus one or one and multiply my X value here. And with that, the first two here are going to go to the left and the middle one is going to go to the right because of that direction number here. So I'm going to save that and let's try this out. And this is looking pretty good. The top one and the bottom one are going to the left and the middle one is going to the right. So that's pretty nice. This is the result that I want to have. And here I could change the speed by changing the value of the X here. So maybe I could have some like a crazy number and now it's going to be like really fast. And you're going to see that now it's creating some gaps here because it's moving so much. And so all I would have to do is duplicate my phrases and have even more phrases. And that way it's going to fill the gap. 
and I still have a gap. So I would need also to change my left value here. So I see that it's the middle one. I'm gonna change it maybe minus 85, something like that, right? And I also see that the top one has some spacing here. So I would need to adjust the values depending on the speed that I want. But for now, I think only two phrases works well for a 250, a translation of 250. And here I'm gonna put that back. I think it was 10 or 15, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think that was it. So yeah, that was it for this animation, a classic animation that I see in every single website, every single awards winning website, even non awards winning website, just regular websites have this animation nowadays. So I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.